So I said meshing is at the heart of the solution. Um, this is a huge part of, of the product, primarily because it then drives other parts of the reporting. So whether you're doing stockpile reports or you're doing your tunnel analysis, whether you want to push out um, a colorized mesh up to Sketchfab, or you want to produce you know, a watertight STL to do some 3D printing, all of this is driven by the meshing engine that is built into Cyclone 3DR. Um, and we're going to go through, and obviously certain parts of our workflow will highlight these meshing capabilities. But you know, not only have we got complex meshing, we've also got things like di digital surface model, digital terrain model creation, um, and, and you can see the image of the ship there. If you have the AEC module, which was the old CAD module in 3D Reshaper, then obviously if you want to do NURB surfacing for, for ship hulls, for example, then that is all built into the solution as well. So it's a very formidable package when it comes to meshing. And then feature extraction. So we're going to have some live um, examples of this in a second. But from the point of view of feature extraction, contours, lowest points analysis, break lines, uh, then we have our building extractor tools. There's loads of different ways to get to a result. Um, so really, this I just wanted that this slide to highlight some of the uh, the, the extraction tools that we've got built into uh, into 3DR. So I think we're going to jump now into now we're going to jump around and get a bit, a little bit into um, the product. So I'm just going to jump into my building extractor tool. Okay, so we could just jump over here. Okay, so this we're now in Cyclone 3DR. So this is all live. So please bear with us. If anything goes wrong, it's not planned. We will just get through it as quickly as we possibly can. If there's any, if there's any issues. But what you can see here, this is just a very, very small data set of a set of stairs. I think collected with some terrestrial, um, with a terrestrial laser scanner. Okay. Um, so you can see here, I'm just going to go inside this data. I'm just navigating around. One thing you will notice is that the navigation matches up with Cyclone 3D, uh, sorry, with the Cyclone Register 360. So if you actually go into the settings menu, you can change between the default camera profile. So you can have it on the old 3D Reshaper or the new 3DR, which matches up with um, the interface, as I said, for Register 360, which provides you all these tools down the right hand side. Now, this example here is you know really really simple we can change the um we can change the representation of that data set to real color if we want to or inspection or we can just have it as flat what single color uh, we can change the point density up and down to give us the best representation of that point cloud uh, and also the density so we've got a real-time decimation and we can also edit the colors if we want to in here but what i wanted to show you in in this example is the building uh, the building extraction tool so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the extraction menu Sorry, I'm going to go to where is it? It's the um, building extraction menu. I'm going to click on my point cloud and I'm going to use the building extractor tool. And all I'm going to do now, you'll see this little uh, menu bar opens up on the left hand side and it runs through a quick pre processing step just to uh, prepare the data ready to start and um, getting that information extracted. And I'm not going to change any of these uh, settings. I'm just going to go straight in and start clicking on the data set to build this uh, to build this model ready for export. So you can see, I'm just gonna click, and every time I click, I'm just gonna press return. And now real time, I'm just going down this stairwell and building up that 3D model, okay? And it really is that simple. I'm just clicking every single time I just click, I'm just pressing return, and I think we've probably got one there. And just, and I can do the sides as well, I can do this side as well. And it took a little bit longer for that one. But what you can see very, very quickly is I've now got a 3D model. If I press OK and that's finished, we're now out into that 3D model geometry that we just created. And this can be exported directly out into CAD if we want to. So if we actually just select, um, if we select that data set now, we can say right click, send towards CAD, and that will go straight over into CAD, or we can export it in another format. And what I wanted to show you, I'll go to building done. You can see this is created using those suite of tools. So we've got that full data set up. Oh, the point cloud is actually turned on at this point. There's the point cloud. I'll turn the point cloud off. So that model has been created using the building extractor tool. And actually, I can use the fly tool. I can go inside and you can see very, very quickly how that's done. And we can obviously turn off some of these other edges to end, to, to end up with a nice final 3D model. So that's the building extractor tool. OK. Um, and then we're going to look at some other extraction tools in a second. I'll just close this data set down. I'm not going to save that. OK, so now we're going to go into ground extraction and also contours as well. So this data set is fantastic. So let's just go over here um, again. Cloudworks menu. 
as I said before, left to right, very, very familiar to you if you're already used to using our CloudWorks tools. But what I wanted to do here is just create a very, very quick slice. I'll do that in Y, um, primarily just to show you the density of the information or the, the problem that we would foresee with this data set. So if I now just go into the side view, you can see that there's an awful lot of vegetation above that ground surface. What you can see just here is um, a small river channel or a paleo channel that's running through that data set. So how do we get rid of all this data? Now there are other ways and means of you know, maybe potentially classifying data, but we want to get that base data very, very quickly. So I'm just gonna reset my clip. I'm gonna click my point cloud, and this time I'm gonna go to my surface modeling tab and I'm going to use the DTM creations. This is gonna create a DTM, a digital train model, and it will drill down through that vegetation to give us um, uh, the mesh. So what you can see here, we can change the percent of uh, the um, angle of the slope of the terrain. So we can change this accordingly. So this is a relatively uh, flat terrain. Um, you can set the direction. We're gonna set this in Z. And you can also then set the grid extraction size. So just to do a very rapid one, I'm gonna do this at two meters. Um, you can also use the fast uh, method of extraction, or you can check the noisy points or look at local steep slopes. This, this does more further analysis. But what I'm gonna do here, I'm, I'm not gonna create another point cloud, I'm just gonna create a, a, a mesh based on the measured points using this two meter grid. So if I now hit preview, you'll see how quickly that runs through and the result that we end with, the, the result that we end up with. Now, obviously, we could decrease that um, extraction size accordingly to get an even finer result. Now, I actually haven't used fast this time. If you use fast, it's even quicker. But there is our result. Now, it doesn't look like a particularly fancy um, terrain model, but we have, you know, as you know before, we've, we've got rid of all the vegetation that was above, um, above that data set. So I actually did another extraction. I'm gonna press um, cancel on this because I don't wanna save it. We did another extraction using that tool, using a 20 centimeter grid. So it probably took a couple of minutes to produce, but I'm going to turn that on now and say show only. So that is the resultant grid, uh, sorry, the resultant mesh from using that uh, 20 centimeter grid. So you can see that we've got a heck of a lot more detail and that has done a fantastic job of removing any data that was above the ground surface. So that's the ground extraction tool. And then we can do, um, if we want to, we can click on this mesh. And if we go to extract, we can extract contour lines directly off this. So I'm gonna say extract contour lines. We'll choose an interval, you know, 10 meters, uh, let's say five meters, and, no, 10 meters, that's fine. And we'll do an interval of, let's go. No, that's fine. Um, and then we, could, we can change the colors accordingly. So if we now hit preview, you can see we've got our contour lines being generated very quickly. I'm actually going to change that down to something like five now. There we go, we'll say preview. There you go. So we've got much, much tighter contour lines. And what you can see, if I turn off the mesh in a second, you can obviously see all the wording behind there. Um, we can turn the mesh off in this view so we can actually very, very quickly ascertain what we've got. Um, so if we now press OK, that's saved that all in there. And all of this information is saved in this, uh, this tree on the left-hand side. So you can see we've now got a contour group, which we can turn on or off. But if we turn the mesh off, I'm now going to export and extract those contours directly out to, um, to another package. So I, I'm just gonna say um, send to AutoCAD. Now what I'll do is uh, AutoCAD is open here in the background. I'm gonna say send to AutoCAD and then open up AutoCAD and you should see Oh, oh my AutoCAD has decided to uh, to crash out. So, oh no, there we go. That's it. That hasn't crashed out at all. It's just taking a little while because we have, we sent the mesh as opposed to the um, as opposed to the terrain model. So that's actually sent the the mesh over directly into AutoCAD, and then that can be you can visualize that according to how you want. So that has sent the the entire data set. I'll just move that around in 3D across into your CAD environment. Um, and then you can move that where you want. So that was just to show the send to AutoCAD function. So there's no export function. There's no file, well, there is a file save as option as well, but if you wanna get this data out into a CAD environment, it's very much just say um, send to AutoCAD, boom. And then if you've got CAD open, that data will be duplicated over in that space. Okay, so we'll just minimize that and jump back to this data set. So that is the ground extraction. Um, just for your pleasure, view of pleasure again, we'll just show that, that mesh that was extracted. So to me, that is an incredibly powerful tool 
and one which doesn't take much time to run. So I imagine where people are using uh, you know, potentially UAV data or airborne LIDAR data, this would be another fantastic solution.